Hello, friends. Dare to be naive is one of my favorite quotes from my mentor, Buckminster Fuller. What he meant was, we should not be afraid to keep the mind of a child, to see with the eyes of a child, to stay curious, to stay hungry, to stay foolish. Sounds familiar. <laughs> <coughs> I'm an architect, and I'm presenting what I am simply because I consider nature or universe that I call God design as the ultimate architecture. As an architect, I approach the problem structurally, and here are my toys. A square is a shape, but not a structure. Why? Because it cannot keep its shape. A triangle, on the other hand, is a shape and a structure. Why? Because it can keep its shape. The tetrahedron made of four triangles is the simplest self-stabilizing structure in the universe. Here, catch. Catch, please. Please, feel for yourself the difference between triangles and squares. Feel the structure. You might ask, but aren't there buildings like this one, for example, mostly square and cubic, but standing? Yes, but if you should open up one of the walls and look inside, you'd find a diagonal member called a brace, which triangulates the building to make it stand. This cube is a structure because it is reinforced by two tetrahedra, one red and one black. And this basically is the reason behind the principle of the octet rule that you might remember from high school chemistry. The octet rule states that atoms with eight valence or outer shell electrons are said to be stable. <coughs> or half that number, that is four, are stable. Why? It's precisely because of this tetrahedroning of the cube. Four electrons make one tetrahedron. Eight electrons make two tetrahedra. And this basically is my model of atomic structure that I call atometrics. The nucleus is positively charged, while the electrons are negatively charged. The nucleus attracts or pulls in the electrons towards the center of the atom, while the electrons in the periphery are repelling, pushing each other apart, and so the peripheral members are all in compression. Now, let me show you how my model applies to atoms and molecules. Let's take, for example, carbon. Carbon has four electrons and its configuration is tetrahedral. <laughs> Why? Because it's the simplest, most symmetrically balanced, with least repulsion amongst the four electrons. And the outer shell of carbon is able to accommodate four more electrons. And so when carbon is surrounded by hydrogen atoms, the hydrogen electrons attach to those empty slots of carbon like so. In the right-hand diagram, the same colored electrons are said to be paired and constitute what's called bonding pairs in molecules. But electrons are not stationary, they're always in motion, in orbit. So, in the next instant, they move onto the other side of the orbit, and now the hydrogen electrons are paired. And then, back again to where carbon electrons are paired and so forth. And this molecule, by the way, is methane, and you can see why methane is tetrahedral. Here is a standard model of C60, or carbon-60, which won three scientists the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1996. The black balls represent carbon atoms, but that's all the information there is. Here is my model of C60. And this is made of 60 of these cubes, each one representing one carbon atom, showing the four electrons, either red or green. 
And as far as I know, this is the first in the world where all the electrons of all the atoms are shown in such a detailed configuration. Here's a better and more accurate model of C60, made by my artist friend, Dennis Gure. And this is made of 60 of these cubes. The large blue marble in the center representing the nucleus, while the smaller marbles represent electrons. Personally, I can't imagine how such a beautiful model could be wrong or not true. Here's a segment of carbon nanotube, another molecule of carbon with very high tensile strength. My model predicts certain new forms of carbon molecules, amongst which is a new form of diamond that I call super diamond, which is twice as dense and hence perhaps twice as hard as ordinary or standard diamond. And here's the model. <clears throat> standard diamond has only the four white carbons around the central black one, whereas my model predicts four more in yellow around the same central one. Of course, I may be wrong. <clears throat> Present science, which is governed by quantum mechanics, which primarily uses math, a non-visual language, considers my architectural, three-dimensional, visually comprehensible model as obsolete, passé, naive. But if superdiamond is discovered naturally in nature, or produced artificially in the laboratory, it will prove the validity of my atometrics model. If proven otherwise, I'd still be happy that I discovered the truth by having dared to be naive. Thank you.